Warning, the following content is not suitable for a younger audience. If you are in fact young, please watch some of my other videos. But if you are old enough to watch this, then welcome. Hello all you beautiful people, my name is Claude and this is Divinity Original Sin 2. And today I have something very special planned for all of you here today. I've implemented a set of rules for myself to not only make the experience more fresh for myself, but hopefully to provide you more chaotic content in which <laughs> anything goes. So we are going to make most of the things in this game completely random from my stats to the type of weapon i'm going to be using even certain skills that i would acquire later down the line which i'm going to be calling the chaotic neutral challenge so here are the rules for this challenge rule number one my starting stats as well as any stat bonuses from level ups will be completely random and be determined by dice roll or random number generator any civil class combat class or talent you know, with the exception of one from the beginning, obtained through level ups will be completely random. Rule number two. Any weapon or armor that I find, I must equip immediately if I have the proper stats for it. Rule number three. I can use any skill that I have learned, but in order to get those skills, I must A, be able to use them, B, they have to be chosen at random when I do decide to purchase them. If I find a skill book, I can still learn the skills from that. Rule number four. Any dialogue choices that I make must be chosen based off of what number I've rolled. Say I have four choices, then I will use a four-sided die. If the dialogue loops back to the previous choices, I can select the other option, but only if there are only two choices left. Any more than two will result in another die roll. Rule number five. I will be playing on tactician mode with the honor settings, which means I only get one save file, and if I die, that's it. The challenge is over. I'm really not sure what to expect with this challenge. I'm probably going to die within the first couple of encounters if I'm lucky enough, but I think this would be a fun way to experience Divinity 2 in a new light. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, this is the build that we have to work with today. So according to our rules, we had to choose a dwarf, which is great because we get more health and access to the petrification touch skill, which allows us to turn enemies into stone for a round which for stalling out time, it's great. For our attributes, we had to choose plus one to our intelligence, which is fine because a lot of skills revolve around intelligence, but our memory is plus two. So it's not gonna help us out right now, maybe for the long run, but it's definitely going to be a struggle within these first couple of you know, playthroughs. And for the combat abilities, we have plus one to scoundrel, which increases our critical hit damage, as well as dual wielding, which, you know, hence the name. Both very good together, but the problem I'm seeing with this is that if we don't have like two daggers or, you know, two of the same weapon, it's not going to be as effective. So we're already off to a great start. And our civil ability, lucky charm. This. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating when I say this is a really lucky thing to have because it gives us a chance of finding either more gold, better weapons, better armor from any loot source. So that's definitely going to help us out. Now, I've mentioned before that everything will be random with the exception of one talent in the beginning. And that one talent we're going to be choosing is a lone wolf. It gives us a wide variety of bonuses, but the reasons I've chose this is that... One, we would be limited to two party members in my character, as well as any other character that we get randomly chosen. Second off, if I did not choose Lone Wolf in the beginning, I would guarantee you we would not last very long. Uh, and I hope that this works out for the best. I mean, we get more armor, more chances to act and that and also more stats in the long run which especially if we're choosing them at random we can use as much help as we can get there is one more thing that we should do before we actually kick off the challenge is we are going to enable some mods to not only help us out but create more random chaos um for example we're going to randomize the various attributes that the enemies would have like sometimes they will be able to summon electric orbs to damage us or they will have access to fireball every turn and you know things of that nature also just some minor things like us being able to talk to animals without using a talent that will definitely help us out in the long run 
and these are just more like conveniences that help me get through everything hopefully they're fine but let me know in the comments if you think that we should not use any mods to help us out or <laughs> or maybe add some more mods to add to the occasion starting off this playthrough i did manage to get really lucky that lucky charm kicked in and we managed to find a restoration scroll now any amount of healing this early in the game will be really helpful after talking with Magister Sawan, she asked us to seek out William, but before we did that, we decided to look for more things inside the various crates around the area, and we did manage to pick up a bedroll in the process, which that's going to allow us to heal up when we're not in combat. William led us to the door, only for us to find three Magisters circling another sorcerer. Apparently, she was doing something, I don't know. But she ends up removing her collar and causing all the Magisters to die and us becoming unconscious. Everything is now on fire. It was at this point where we got to choose our first weapon and I went on Google's random number generator and through that result we are only able to choose these first improvised staff which it's pretty decent you know does 5 to 7 damage early on plus it gives us you know, extra skill to use, so we immediately equipped that and we went up the stairs soon after. After politely knocking on one of the doors, two magisters saw that I had stole a bucket and started accusing me of being a sorcerer. With my trusty magic stick, I was able to defeat the first magister. The other magister had the defiler effect, which gave him more damage, health, and healing, but he was no match for my stick and stone combo. With the Shattered Two-Hander, we made our way around the ship to try and find some hidden gold, but instead we found my first bow. I swiftly swapped out the Two-Hander with it and then made my way up to the deck, only to find two Wormy Boys with Retribution, which means that I take half the damage that I will deal to them. It was at that moment that it seemed like the run was over. But then I had a thought. Bows are not melee weapons. I can easily snipe them from below and use the one weakness of ladders to make sure I don't get hit. After the battle, a little girl asked us to help the other prisoners, and against the dice's better judgement, it allowed us to go and help. Well, I say help, but it looked like they could handle it themselves. We came across Sawan again, and she is dying in the pool of her blood. So we left her there, and then the ship sank. Under the sea. We woke up on a beach only to find more wormy boys. At this point I knew the challenge was going to get much more difficult and I almost died trying to kill them. Thankfully the RNG gods blessed us and we were able to level up, giving us more constitution, dexterity, and a buff to our range attacks, but our sneaking skill also increased. We met a cat who told us that he would join the party if we let Fane join as well. Remembering that black cats are lucky, we agreed and decided to meet up with Fang, who just so happens to know fighter abilities, and at this point, we can use all the help we can get, and since Lone Wolf allows up to two party members, that means we will still be able to keep our stat bonuses, health, and all of that. The cat, my new best friend Sans, and I watched a murder and took what she had. We then picked a fight with some thugs like the heroes we are, and we talked to the elf that we saved. She gave us a nice set of armor, as well as her thanks. We talked to someone to obtain some skills, and then we made our way to fight the turtles. It was at this point I remembered that I forgot to switch out Fane's current talent to Lone Wolf before the battle, which means he's at a huge disadvantage. To make matters worse, Corporal Leon, the man who would brave these harsh trials, sadly passed away from a purple orb of death. One like equals one prayer for Corporal Leon. Fang tried to run, but having seen the death of his most trusted ally, all he could do was try to run away. In his sorrow, he mistakenly attacked another purple orb of death, causing him to go boom, thus ending this run. Well friends, we didn't clear the challenge this time, but next time we'll do it. We will! clear act one with this challenge and i need your help to do it leave a like subscribe and comment below about any suggestions for future challenges together we can do this like true chaotic neutral should it's what our characters would do stay classy stay beautiful have a good day